The day will come when our silence will be more powerful than the voices you strangled today. Bitch. <laughs> The Anarchist Handbook is a collection of writings organized by Michael Malice. Now, I don't have a hard copy because this was only $11 on Kindle, so how could I, why would I spend more money? Doesn't matter, you should get it, there's a link in the description. Uh, before we get started actually, what you should do is subscribe and click like and click the bell button and it will cure my chronic loneliness. I mean, this is probably not a good idea to begin with, so maybe I'll just get rid of, I can't get it off. Let's cut. Before we get into the five things I found really cool about this book, I'll give you a general overview. Who is Michael Malice? You might have heard the name Michael Malice before. I mean, he floats around all different sorts of podcasts. He was on Joe Rogan talking about jellyfish. He was on Dave Rubin dressed as Willy Wonka. He has his own show called You're Welcome. Because he's also an internet troll as well as an author. He wrote Dear Reader and The New Right as well as being a very accomplished ghostwriter. But I personally just know him as that guy from Cash Cab. Awesome, nice to meet you. Welcome to the Cash Cab. What's going on? I'm Mike. We're going to Broom and Allen. So what exactly is anarchy? Because anarchy has a lot of different negative connotations attached to it. Introduce a little anarchy. But all of these negative connotations seem to come from a lack of knowledge and understanding, which is where the handbook comes in handy. Handbook comes in handy. All right, I'm gonna stick with that. Anarchism is simply a relationship where neither party has authority over the other. Anarchism isn't a location, it's a relationship, right? So you and I have an anarchist relationship. Neither of us has an authority over the other. In one sense, anarchism is nothing more than the declaration that you do not speak for me. Everything else is just implementation. On Blinkist, which summarizes the main points of a book, the anarchist handbook is only a three second read. It simply states, hate the state. That's it, it's pretty simple, that's all you need to know. So here are the five cool insights or things that you'll get from the book or something. Number one is that it's very broad. In this collection, you're gonna learn about how police would work in a society. Ah, I can't do it. This sentence is too long. All right, here we go. In this collection, you're gonna learn about how police could work in a stateless society. You will learn how national defense could be funded in a stateless society. In a society with no government, how will public goods be funded? That's a good question, and that is addressed in this collection. That was, that was quite poetic. You will also learn about how the social construct is make-believe garbage and how a distant planet called Monosizia can help you explain to your friends the silliness of the Constitution. That sounds very far out, but this book is far out, so you should check it out. I keep rhyming, I'm not trying. <laughs> These were some of the topics that are covered in the Anarchist Handbook, but when I say it's broad, I don't mean that it's broad just in terms of the topics that it covers. It's also broad in terms of the spectrum it covers. The handbook contains essays that you would never seek out to read on your own. Now, why wouldn't you read some of these essays and writings on your own? Well, because there's a lot of different flavors of anarchy and people tend to stay within their own realms of interest without venturing out too far. The book begins predominantly with what I would call left anarchy and it makes its way across the whole spectrum. As someone who's predominantly interested in libertarian writings and anarcho-capitalist writings, I have to say that some of these left-wing writings were pretty entertaining. Uh, and I don't mean that in a bad way, I mean that in a good way. I mean, they were pretty badass. One of them's just called Dynamite. Dwight brought gasoline and chunks of rubber to make stink bombs. Or real bombs. No, no, not real bombs. Yeah, come on, it'll be so badass. Off with a mask, this is war. Violence can be met only with violence. If they attack us with the cannon, we will attack them with dynamite. And whenever possible, let us attack first. To oppression, to exploitation, to persecution, to police, jails, militia, armies and navies, there is but one answer. Dynamite. Like that's, that's cool. It's gonna be so badass! The Anarchist Handbook gives you a chance to explore different perspectives without just making mere assumptions about them. I mean, I very much doubt that I was ever going to read a left-wing anarchist essay about trying to install some sort of like stateless communism. I was never going to read that and I doubt that the, like a little Antifa boy is going to pick up Anatomy of the State and be like, like on his own, like this is not going to happen. It's the best of the best. Nothing made me happier, I mean, 
obviously things made me happier, but I mean, in, 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 like while reading, nothing made me happier than seeing Tolstoy tell me not to pay taxes and then Rothbard to tell me that we are not the state. I mean, it's the best of the best. And having these two guys next to each other, it's, it's crazy. And there's no doubt that Tolstoy is one of the greatest writers of all time. So to read him being so based is amazing, it's magic. The robber generally plundered the rich. The governments generally plunder the poor and protect those rich who assist in their crimes. The robber doing his work risked his life, while the governments risk nothing but base their whole activity on lies and deception. Another amazing writer and obvious mention is Emma Goldman. In the essay Minorities vs Majorities, Emma apologises for getting that Green Day song stuck in your head but she also has this to say. The most unpardonable sin in society is independence of thought. That this should be so terribly apparent in a country whose symbol is democracy is very significant of the tremendous power of the majority. Another honourable mention is Louis Ling, and I know I've been talking about the left-leaning anarchists so far, but I mean, like I said, I hadn't read, re I hadn't read, I hadn't read these people. Now I'm going to stick with that. I hadn't read these people before, so some of it was just fascinating to me. Louis Ling was the anarchist accused of throwing the bomb that killed seven police officers at the Haymarket Massacre in Chicago. But when police questioned him about it, he apparently said this, uh, it couldn't have been me throwing the bombs because I was at home, making bombs. Before the police could hang him for his crimes, he smuggled an explosive device into his prison cell and blew off his jaw. And then he wrote hooray for anarchy in blood on the prison wall. But when you think about it, that's probably one of the most German things to do because Germans are so productive, he was probably just waiting to bleed out and was like, oh, you know, I'll just write anarchy on the wall before I go because what, what else to do? Like they don't not do anything, they're always doing something. Anyway, it's badass regardless, but I think he's just being productive. Number three, it's in depth, very in depth, so in depth. As I mentioned before, this collection is very broad, but it goes deep very quickly. So there's a lot of knowledge and a lot of gems in a lot of these essays and writings. Um, and probably each chapter merits its own video and explanation because they're so interesting. But uh, I mean, I don't have time for that. Unless you guys like and share more, I might just give up entirely. I'm th that's a threat pretty empty threat but it's a threat nonetheless. Anyway I am doing a video about Market for Liberty uh, which I'm also going to marry with Bob Murphy's chaos theory because explaining to people how police could work in a stateless society seems to be a necessity now because that's what people are obsessed with but we'll get to that in another video. How else does this collection go deep? Well, there's a section called The Myth of the Rule of Law by John Hasnas. Now, if you're a lawyer or studying law or thinking about studying law, you should read this first. You can't rely on the law to be sure that if you abide by it, you're doing the right thing. And the other thing is you can't rely on your ethical intuitions. If you're doing what you think is right, there are cases in which you'll be in legal trouble. People should be aware of that. He argues that because laws are political in nature and because they contradict each other, there's actually no justice and morality in our society. Because if laws are political in character, then they can't be this objective embodiment of justice that we kind of believe them to be. They're not, they're political. Think about it this way. If the law was an embodiment of objective truth or objective justice, then why does it matter who's on the Supreme Court? Why is it that every political party is always pushing to pack the court with their guys? It shouldn't matter. As stated in the book, Political laws are not consistent. The law human beings create to regulate their conduct is made up of incompatible, contradictory rules and principles, and as anyone who has studied a little logic can demonstrate, any conclusion can be validly derived from a set of contradictory premises. This means that a logically sound argument can be found for any legal conclusion. Number four, it's a quick read. Now, I don't know about you, but when I'm on Netflix, I look through all the movies and I'm a movie guy, I like a good movie. But the first thing I do these days is look at that little section that says how long the movie's gonna be. And if it's over 90 minutes, I'm like, too long. And then I'll just watch The Office for like five hours straight. 
This collection is the same. It's not one work that you have to read cover to cover. And you can actually fly through it quite quickly because it just feels like it's moving along quite quick because the subjects change, the authors change, and it's, it's great. It's a quick read and I recommend it, obviously, since I'm making this video. Buy it in the link below. Number five will make you feel all right. And number five is the main reason you should read this book. That is because the tide is turning. These ideas are coming to the forefront. This book was number one on Amazon. It beat Hillary Clinton and it beat Obama. Everyone I have who likes me, Barack Obama has a thousand more people who would literally take yeah. a bullet for him. And it should be a New York Times bestseller, but they're being all like, oh no, we don't know where it was published because it's Amazon and that means it's probably not published in America. Whatever. The point is that the tide is turning and people are craving these ideas. There's a great thirst for this sort of material and why wouldn't there be? Governments around the world are locking people in their homes. They're destroying their businesses. They're destroying the housing market. They're manipulating the money supply. They are creating a new war, possibly with China. Why wouldn't people want to seek out another way? Did I say another way? Yes, I did, because that reminds me of a documentary called Another Way, which is an Australian libertarian documentary and you should see it. It's in the description. It's also up here or up here, I don't know, either side. You should watch it. It's totally grand. But what do you think? Have you read the book? What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. Just say hi. Let me know you're here. Hit subscribe, hit the bell button, and I will see you next time.